comparison between RIP standard and miniaturized extracorporeal circulation. Dr. Halbe. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maximilian Halbe. I'm a perfusionist from the University of Zurich. The data are from the University of Bonn. So our leading question during the study was, is it possible to reduce the need for intra- and post-operative blood, blood transfusion during the cardiac surgery? What we do, we matched three ECC systems. Uh, on the un one side, the RockSafe system as a mini bypass system. There is a different to the both other systems. There's a centrifugal pump uh, instead of a roller pump, and there is no venous uh, reservoir. That means there is no um, blood air contact, and the foreign surface is also Less, lesser than in the both other groups. So there's the standard cardiac pulmonary bypass system. You see in the middle of the pictures, there's a big venous reservoir. Um, there is a, uh, the roller pump on the system. And we have the group of uh, RAP. There is, this system is the same system as the standard cardiac pulmonary bypass system. The only attention is that, uh, additional is that there's a uh, empty blood bag for the crystalloid priming. The retrograde outlook priming procedure is uh, like the, that you can see it on the slide, that there's a cannula all uh, in the patients. And uh, now we start the retrograde outlook priming when we put the blood from the patient through the system and we can put the, the crystalloid priming in the empty bag, and the same as the uh, venous side, we clamped, we have to clamp the arterial side, and then we can slowly open the venous clamp, um, and then we can uh, slowly flow the patient, own patient blood in the reservoir. We have to start the roller pump, and then we can put the crystalloid priming from the reservoir put in the empty bag, and uh, yes, that is a procedure of the retrograde autologous priming. To our study, the patient we um, matched was, uh, there were no significant, no significant difference in the groups. Um, to the method of the study, we matched 90 patients for a cabbage operation. There were no major complications or death during the study. Uh, I think it's important to say that there was only one operation team. That means there was one surgeon, one anesthesiologist, and one perfusionist during the study. And uh, yes, uh, anesthetic and hemodynamic management was similar. To our results, uh, we see the priming. Uh, you can see there is a significant difference in the groups. Uh, the both groups where we did the retrograde autolook priming have a lower level of um, hemidilution uh, by starting the uh, extracorporeal circulation. And um, the next results are the maximal lactate during the CPB was. Um, I think it's a pretty good result um, for the both groups where we did the retrograde outlook priming. Also, the ur urination on CPP was uh, different. Now to our maybe the important result. There is um, you can see the HB course on uh, this slide during the CPB. There is no significant difference in the groups, but you can see the first HB on ECC measured by the uh, standard cardiopulmonary bypass system is uh, lower than in the both other groups. And there, that there is no different, no significant difference, I think, is uh, you can see it on this slide, that we have to um, consumption uh, red blood units uh, during the CPB in the both other groups in the in the sorry in the in the standard cardiopulmonary bypass group group uh, we have to put um, a lot of red blood units uh, into the patient. The HB course postoperative for 48 hours after the operation. You can see a similar 
uh, curve uh, at, as in the operation room. There are no different, no significant difference in the groups, but there's uh, nearly the same result after uh, maybe post-operative, uh, the consumption um, post-operative, there's the same or nearly the same result as uh, in the operation room. To our conclusion, uh, the ARP group and the RockSafe group, that means a mini bypass group, are of the same value. Uh, but the advantage of the ARP are the low cost, the easy application, and uh, you can do the ARP, the ARP with a standard bypass system mostly by uh, every type of operation. And I think the disadvantage of RockSafe are the um, there's a high level of communication during the whole operation. Yes, it's uh, elaborate, and it's uh, for us during the study it was very expensive. So uh, thank you for your attention. Questions? Nicolas Monaros, congratulations. I think it was one of the most uh, didactic, schematic uh, presentations I've ever seen for, uh, for that. I have a question. Uh, if you're taking out half a liter of blood from the patient, um, there are some anesthesiologists who could uh, replace this uh, through crystallite infusion. So how do you uh, c uh, combine those two problems? Do you st say the tell the anesthesiologist we stop it? Uh, you work with uh, vasoconstrictors, and how much time do you usually need for this um, uh, recrudate priming? Okay, thank you, and thank you for this question. Um, I think we, when if the patient do not allow to uh, do the RIP during, to, uh, before we start the CPB, we go to the Trendelberg position. So um, we try to don't use any vasopressors. And uh, I think it's during uh, two to three minutes. But if the patient has a pressure drop, so we can start the CPP all time. And I think it's a very safe method to uh, to um, yes to try to um, don't give any transfusion. All right. Thank you, Maximilian. <clears throat> 